I don't want to Netflix and chill and kick back and just waste my mind. Like, I know I got this. This is what I have. Our emotions are time machines. And that does sound a little crazy. So what do I mean by that? I mean, our thoughts take our emotions with them wherever our thoughts happen to wander. If I start uh, looking at my father and go, damn, dad, I wish uh, you really loved me more when I was a kid. Yeah, that's not the case. He was a pretty decent dad. But that's just an example a lot of people have. And so they take their emotions, they take their thoughts back to those times whenever they did not have the love or the affection that they needed. And they become hurt all over again. Instead of learning how to trigger those thoughts so your emotions don't bounce around different time periods of your life while you're living this life. We tend to waste moments, our valuable moments. The only thing that we really have is time. So if our minds are focusing on how people piss us off, how our girlfriend, who's now an ex-girlfriend, is making me mad, and I start talking about them, and then I start taking my mind and emotions back to those uh, hurtful or aggravating times, well, all of a sudden I am reliving that over and over and over again instead of retraining my mind to allow my emotions to flow forward instead of backwards. We're all responsible for doing this to ourselves. We do it all the time. The trick is to do the best you can to be aware of yourself, almost like you are looking at yourself from afar. And whenever we catch ourselves living in the past, uh, some of us have had great accomplishments and great failures. And we, we will jump back in time in our thoughts and in our emotions and just dwell on that. Instead of planning, thinking, and feeling what is next. So what we end up doing is wasting that moment on feelings of the past. You know, what is time? That's a whole nother uh that's a whole nother podcast. But for us, in this reality that we experience, it's linear. And if we know we're going from point A to point B and we're in the middle, why are we wasting all that remaining length on living back here when we need to be focused here and there? It's a really important thing that people should consider because we see it all the time. We see people that... In, in, interferes with their existing relationships. And because somebody hurt us before, we automatically think that new person, whether it's a friend or girlfriend or wife, husband, that they're going to do the exact same things. We start feeding those old past emotions into other people. And we start building on that energy. And we actually can manifest and make those things happen from our own energy pouring into somebody else. And even if they don't do that, do, do any of the negative things somebody else did to us in the past, we start to perceive it because we've trained our mind. That's the way things are. And those things don't have to be that way. Most everything is perception and how we perceive it. How we let the how we let the external world dictate our, our emotions when we must be the captains of our own ship. When the stressful things happen, you know, like last week, we had some pretty stressful events around here at the sanctuary. At first, it was extraordinarily irritating, and then you have to take a step back. You have to take a deep breath and like, look, I'm not going to let this ruin my day. I have this one day. This is the only time right now that I know I'm alive. I know I'm here. I know I'm surrounded by good friends that are sitting over here and like to come join us on Sundays. I know I'm going to be with my wife. I know I'm, I have the opportunity to laugh and smile and hold your hand and be happy. So why am I going to allow these external forces to change my mood? Why am I going to let those negative people and negative things that, that are, they're trying to do affect me? I just have to learn how to deal with it and roll with it and figure it out without becoming depressed, angry, aggressive, uh, wanting to raise my voice, uh, squashing those emotions uh, to allow all these years of martial arts training to come out and go, pat, pat, pat. <laughs> you you, you got to suppress, and not necessarily suppress, suppress is the wrong word, is just to allow it to flow. Just let it flow right on past. I'm going to figure it I'm going to figure this out because 
I think uh, a Kevin of three or four years ago would, or even longer, but especially three or four years ago, would be really pissed off. And I would be pissed off for days. And what a waste of life. Like, why would I be, why would I do that to myself anymore? It seems like the older that we get, we hope that we gain wisdom and we're able to look at our life and go, hey, this is all I got. Uh, I need to make this moment count. And when we catch ourselves drifting back into the past, the things that are irritating or that were sad, just switch it. It just takes a little practice. It's not really that difficult. All you have to do is just stop focusing on that negative thing. Just take our thoughts, because whatever we're focusing on, that's where our energy goes. That's where our emotions are going to carry us. So if we can take ourselves and go, hey, I am getting aggravated. I'm a little sad today. I'm pissed off right now. We just don't focus on that thing that's pissing you off. Take your thoughts and go, hey, how am I better going to serve myself? Hey, emotions inside here, how are you going to better serve us? And it's not by thinking about and dwelling on this. We need to think about, let's find solutions, let's be patient, let's know things take time, and let's surround ourselves with positive energy. That's why I married you. <laughs> well, that, that's a true statement. Uh, because you have a, a naturally bubbly, full of life, energy, always kind, always sweet, Except he didn't make me eggs this morning, which was disturbing. <laughs> Still feeling the negative energy about that. <laughs> I'm trying to focus my thoughts away from breakfast. <laughs> but that, it's true. We can focus on things that just uh, bring us down. And who's responsible for that? I mean, we're responsible for our own emotions. And fixing your own eggs. <laughs> right, which I did. They turned out great. <laughs> I got the opportunity to make my own eggs, and that, that was a wonderful thing. And, but we're the ones responsible. It's not the, the girlfriend or the wife or ex-wife or your kids or best friend or whatever. They're not the one actually making you pissed off. It's you allowing you to be pissed off. You're allowing other people to hijack your emotions and your thoughts and make you miserable or whatever way they make you feel. It's all on you. It's up here in this space, and we can't blame them for making us pissed off. We can only blame ourselves and just recognize it. And then once we're recognizing, recognizing what is happening, we just start tweaking ourselves. We just have to say, all right, I'm not going to let that bother me. And that takes a lot of practice. That doesn't come easy because yeah, I'm certainly no master of it. But I try, and sometimes I'm pretty successful at it. Sometimes it takes me a little, little bit, but I'll never get good at it if I don't try, if I don't practice, if I don't look at those situations in my life. Did I hear you say try? Yeah, I don't try. We just do. And that is another thing. That's one of those things. you got to be real selective about words. You can't say try. I'm going to try to do that. No, I'm just going to do it. It may take a little bit because I have to catch myself saying dumb words like try. <laughs> and that's true. And language is important. So we reinforce these, these things that keep us down, like language, like I'm going to try. That's dumb. I'm not going to try. I'm just going to do it. And then every time I, I fail to do it and I catch myself getting upset or irritated or if I know somebody is uh, is doing the best they can at something and they screw up instead of just well, why the hell did you do that you dumbass you know I mean instead of acting like that yeah well you know he did his best he could he didn't understand this one particular thing maybe I didn't communicate it right they're they're just changing that perspective and, and switching how you're looking at it in a different way can make all the difference. It does make all the difference. And there's no way to have inner peace and calm and really move your life in positive directions if you're always getting upset over little bitty things. Because it's not the person. It's not you. It's not my buddies over here. It's not our friends that come out uh, on Sundays that... Uh, would cause me to be irritated. I mean, some of them have said something and has been uh, a shocker on occasion, but that's just with anybody and everywhere. But that shouldn't change me. That shouldn't make me irritated. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're 100% right. How do you do it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't ever find myself mad. <laughs> 
And now we got a full fledged liar on film. <laughs> I mean, but you really don't. You never really get mad. I've never seen you mad. I'm pretty sure I struggle with trying to turn that switch and say, hey, you're being a bitch today. You're being negative today. Turn. I mean, it takes me a little while. It's not something I can do right away. You're pretty good at it because you. I've noticed just in our two and a half years of being married that whenever you are aware that you have a... Uh, you're kind of down in the dumps about something. You were irritated by uh, your work that day. I have noticed a gradual, well, it was never bad to begin with, but that as time has rolled on, you've become increasingly more aware of those moods, and you're pretty quick to alter them so it doesn't affect the energy of everybody else. I like to think about uh, Parker, my stepson, your son, Whenever we were taking a road trip and we, we, you know, every 12 year old, 13 year old kid, they're kind of moody at times. Like that's just the natural course for every one of them. Like, I don't think there are any exceptions to that. So we just made it back. We, we wanted to be consciously aware that, hey, instead of calling him out on it, I just brought it up. I said, hey, if I get moody at all on this uh, road trip, just tell me. I'm being moody, and then I have to instantly fix it. We're gonna play. We're gonna play the mood switch game. And then I said, "Will you agree to do that?" He said, "Yes." I said, well, "Can I do the same with you? If you get moody, we're gonna call it out." So everybody's energy, and we did the same. We ask you the same thing. So everybody made a pack. If we anybody gets a little moody, we call each other out, and we have to laugh and smile and be happy. And it worked like a champ. Which was a great idea. It was a fantastic idea but, uh, because it, it allows intent. Uh, you know, we all get together today. Uh, we got this group of people here and we intend. We got together and we intended on talking about something that affects our daily lives and that can improve our life. And switching ourselves into better moods, into, into better focus is critical. And just like going on a road trip. Hey, let's all intend to do good. Let's call each other out, not in a negative way. Just, hey, it's your turn. You're being moody. And stop it. It's not that difficult. What is difficult to get in a better mood with is somebody says, hey, you're being an asshole. <laughs> it is. It's language again. It goes back to language and intent. So then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, what'd you say? You're talking to me? Huh? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, that changes the whole thing. So you, you can't talk to somebody when they're being negative to you and you fire back with negativity thinking all of a sudden all these negative forces are just going to turn into big smiley faces. That's not how that works. Well, so the doing the, uh, what were we doing in the, the workroom? Planting the stuff? What's that called? Seeding? Oh yeah, we were seeding. <laughs> we were making uh, plants this morning. Well, so you told Parker we're going to do that and he's like, ugh. So I'm doing this to him behind your back, and he's like, and then you said, we're not going to have any of that. And he's changed it just like that. Yeah. Yeah, he, well, he just didn't want to plant some seeds. We had about 15 minutes worth of uh, some farm work. We were planting some peppermint that um, we're going to put out in the field and, and during the spring. And typical any kid, and I mean, sometimes I do it too. I'm like, ugh, I got to do that. But when you call it out in a way that is not like you're not being you know, reprimanding you, I'm not getting on to you, I'm not being mean to you, just we're not having any of that. Just none. Like we're just wiping it away. You may not feel that way right now, but it's okay. You take a deep breath and we're going to do it. And if we're going to do it, we're going to enjoy each other while we do it. And he had fun. And he and remembered, he had a, and, and he remembered he had a, how to do it from the last time. And he had, we had a great time. And then we're cracking jokes and uh, it just Spilling really. stuff. And, <laughs> and we're enjoying each other's company where that could have easily been if we weren't really practicing for years now, practicing how to be aware of how our words and our actions and our energy affect each other. Could have easily just said, uh, or any parent, this is like this for any circumstance, just get over here and do it. You know, and then that creates that whole negative tone. And then all of a sudden you miss out that opportunity of not being uh, 
jovial and, and doing something together in a loving way, you, you totally destroy that. When it could just, those little switches, those little words, that little energy, like, okay, I'm not going to let that negative energy from going, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to, that's not going to bother me. It's just, no. Everything in life is like that when we interact with people. I catch myself uh, getting frustrated so many times and it has made my life infinitely better by just taking a deep breath and going, and then just thinking about it for a second. If I don't want to be around that person because they're just so negative, there's nothing I can do or say that makes any difference how they interact with me. Well, I don't want to be with them. I don't have to have my energy mixing up with their energy. I don't need to. I don't have to. I just leave, go, bye. I don't even have to say bye. <laughs> just, just go. Felicia. Yeah, bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah, you just don't. You don't have to do any of that. It's the same way why I enjoy being around uh, this crowd that's here with us on Sundays is because we all come together with the intent on being happy, being supportive. You know, if there's any issues that need to be worked out, like people need to get things off their chest and how what different tools are available, we're able to talk about those kind of things. And sometimes, I mean, heck, we've stayed up and late in the night having bonfires out here just uh, working on the power of positive intent and bringing our emotions from the past, time traveling them back into the present and then focusing on, hey, I don't want to live back there. I don't want all the trauma and other people's attitudes that I have adopted as my own. I want to unadopt them. <laughs> I want to take my programming of my own behavior and not continue to build on that past that was not serving me to the highest level. So do you not think it's important to talk about your past? To I think it is important. Past? Yeah. I mean, we all like sharing stories, just like being in Tennessee. Dad's telling that same story, and Mom said, if I have to hear this story one more time, but people like to share their stories and jokes. and All, all of that is fine. What I'm, I'm really referring to is actually living in the past oh sure it's okay to revisit it but just don't unpack your tent and set up shop there right it, it, it can be problematic and and a lot of people have to hit the exact bottom of their emotional trough and it's just kind of like alcoholics have to go to the bottom a lot of drug users they have to go to the bottom before they can snap out of it it's the same way emotionally. Sometimes people have to just damn near have emotional breakdowns before they start to understand, hey, I can, I can, I can fix that. I can stop that. And just I, like we were talking last night, you don't have to have a therapist. I mean, you've got everything you need inside. Yeah, for sure. And I think there are, you definitely don't need a therapist. Now, somebody really good with experience helping other people that actually has tools to help you think how to change that. You know, I mean, there are a bunch of tools that we're not going to get into in this podcast that can that help you not dwell on the past, help you focus on the future, and focus on the right now. Oh, I think and, they and can those be are important. beneficial. And those, sure. yeah, yeah, those could be really, really helpful. But I know they're like Joe Dispenza has been really uh, helpful to me. There's a lot of guests on Aubrey Marcus's podcast that have been great. Danica's podcast, too. There's been a lot of interviews and different people exchanging ideas that that's how I want to spend my energy. So I'm not, uh, I don't want to Netflix and chill and, and kick back and just waste my mind. Like, I know I got this, this is what I have. It's kind of like the, um, some of the characters in Atlas Shrugged, you know, I, I, I'm going on strike because this is all I have. And then I can do anything with this. I don't have to have anything else. I can experience loss, I can experience poverty, I can experience getting you know, physically beat up or abused, I can do whatever I determine how that's going to dictate my emotions and how I'm going to move forward in my life. Nobody else. And there are a lot of people that have conversations about this, like we do here, that we can tweak and move. And it is a something that people should be aware of because the, their emotions do time travel and there is no point in bouncing all over the place 
emotionally and living there for days on end or years on end. Some people never come out of it. What inhibits you from living in the now and it inhibits you from envisioning a future? Yeah, how, how do you have a future and build on a future if you're just depressed over your current situation in life? And then you continue to dig in that current situation instead of figuring out and thinking about and being positive in nature and moving forward and being happy for right now. Like there's a lot to be happy for in the now, even if everything else is going to crap. And there are ways to, to rebuild our lives at any age. And it's important for our personal well-being to go, hey, I am going to live right now. I was really depressed a minute ago because I was pissed off. I just had to, you know, my car broke down and I had to spend all my money on that and it really just pisses me off and I'm sad about it. And all right, well, that's over. It's done with, so we can't dwell on it. So we're going to let that ruin our day? Or are we just going to look over at somebody that we really love and go, hey, I love you, man. I'm glad I'm with you today. This is awesome. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to, to approach life. And if we approach life always in the negative fashion, then we're going to live negative. We're going to be negative. And I don't want to be negative. That's why I decided to hang out with you <laughs> and all these people over here. I love these people. And yeah, You guys, we talk about all of these subjects and so much more every Sunday. Sometimes even people want to come over during the week, which is totally fine as long as you uh, call me and let me know. But we have a very broad spectrum of topics that are really helpful. And if you want to engage with us, feel free to go browse all of our channel and come out here on Sundays if you're in the local area. And well, we are going to have one of our cows go to slaughter and if you live in the local area and you want to participate first of all you have to come out and love on the cow first you have to love it and i'm not letting anybody share in the meat that doesn't love the cow first and anyway thanks for joining us we'll see you next time